All right, boys, we are going to continue where we left off on AMC 12A because I did not get to read all the questions and I kind of want to read them and make sure I still know how to do it. And you know, something epic happened, dude. <laughs> One of the questions I thought I got wrong on 12B, I actually got right. So now my score is actually pretty good. I think I have a shot at AMO. We will see it. I have to actually get like an 11 on Amy, so that's kind of insane. But we'll see. We'll see. And also, bro, do you guys hear about the Yusubo nonsense? Dude, literally, they had to throw out everybody's scores because like people got yeeted. Uh, I don't even know what's going on. As far as I'm aware, the way it's gonna work is that they're just gonna release the scores for what people got, like, the first time it took them, whether or not they got, um, kicked out early. And then everybody's just gonna be allowed to take the semis, so, oh well. I think that's the best they could do under the circumstances, because, I mean, you can't, like, undo technical difficulties, so, it's okay. But today is about AMC, okay? Who cares about Yusubo when you can talk about AMC? We, we gotta do some studying, okay? Hello everybody, I'm Farrar, and today we are gonna be doing problem 22 to, I don't know, because I don't know how long these are gonna take, but let's just try as many as we could. Okay, let us get this party started with problem number 22, okay. So, roots of the polynomial are these three boys, and we wanna find A, B, C. So, like, obviously this is probably a Vieta, like, obviously probably that not make any sense, but probably Vieta, right? So, we know that A is equal to negative cosine 2 pi over 7, minus cosine 4 pi over 7, minus cosine 6 pi over 7. Dude, I hate trig identities with a passion, but it is okay. Then b is equal to negative, co I mean, no, positive cosine 2 pi over 7, cosine 4 pi over 7, and then all the pairwise boys. All right, and then c is just equal to the negative of the product of all three, so pi over 7, cosine 4 pi over 7, and cosine 6 pi over 7. Okay, and essentially you want to multiply these three things together and see what we get. And <laughs> that is yucky, yucky, very yucky. Holy. <laughs> oh, okay, so what could we do? So there's like negative cosine 1 over 1 power 7, but I probably don't want to use that. That would not be ideal. So if we multiply all of these together, what do we get approximately? Okay, so well, this guy is like not that bad because it's all just one term. The rest of them are three terms, so we might have to be a bit more careful with those. So three terms, what do we do with three terms? I don't want to multiply three terms together, god dang it. Okay, so I guess like it's going to be negative of c, or sorry, it's going to be like, so, so, okay, so for each term, it's multiplied by the other one, so it's going to be like cosine 2 pi uh, over 7 squared times cosine 4 pi, then there's cosine 4 squared times cosine 2 pi, and then there's all three together, and then that happens for each one of them. So there's like, um, ab is equal to like, what? So it'll be like some square nonsense, right? Oh, wait, wait, so if you cube A, what if you cube A? Wait, what <laughs> What am I trying to do? No, we're just multiplying them. So, uh, what? So AB is like equal to all three together and then pairwise like squared stuff. Uh, and we're, how many pairwise squared stuff do we get of each one? Only one, one of each pairwise thing. So it's like minus three, like, okay, why don't we say it's XYZ so it's less confusing, right? So we have like, a is equal to negative x minus y minus z, b is equal to x, y, z, or x, y plus y, z plus x, z, and c is equal to x, y, z, negative x, y, z. So, if we multiply them, then we basically get like, I mean, this is one term, so that doesn't really matter. Huh, there's like something where the sum of roots of unity always sum to zero, but I'm not sure about that. Well, these are for sure roots of unity for 7, right? Like 2 pi k over 7. So the first three, so it's like zero, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are roots of unity. If you sum all of them, you get zero. So that means if you sum the x coordinates of these guys, you should get negative one half, right? Because then this will be negative one half and that's one. So essentially like a should be equal to positive one half, okay? Now multiplying is a little bit tricky, right? So are there any fun <laughs> multiply cosine stuff. Well, okay, so I guess you could do like cosine of like what? Um, cosine of, of what? Cosine of 6 pi over 7, my, what, what? Plus cosine 2 pi over 7 and then over 2, right? So that's for multiplying 2 and 4 together. Then if you multiply 2 and 6 together, you get like cosine, um, what? Cosine, uh, What's the thing? Oh, 8 pi over 7, comma, or plus cosine of 4 pi over 7 over 2. And then this one is just equal to 6 pi over 7 by cosine identities. And then the last one would just be um, cosine, so 4 and 6, so 10 pi over 7, which is what? Is that just 4? Yeah, 4 pi over 7, same thing. Plus uh, cosine 2 pi over 7 over 2. 
wait, that is so broken. Because <laughs> if you add all of these, then essentially you just get back your original sum. So this is also equal to one half. And then now the product I'm assuming is going to be a bit tough, right? So essentially product of four and two is this guy. And then you multiply this whole thing by cosine six pi over seven, right? Uh, how do we, how do we split this up nicely? Yeah, so how do you find, okay, so the last thing we need to find is like cosine, cosine uh, 2 pi over 7 times cosine 4 pi over 7 times cosine 6 pi over 7. How do we find that? Wait, so how do we prove that the product is 0? So roots of unity are basically solutions to z cubed, or z to the 7 is equal to 1. So z to the 7 minus 1 is equal to 0. Oh, hold up. Uh, wait, so if you have like product of the roots, shouldn't that be 1 then? Or no, that's product of the roots. Oh, product of the roots! Wait, yeah, that's a big brain. Okay, hold up. Hold up. Okay, so sum of the roots is clearly zero, right, by Vieta's. Then product of the roots is like, product of the roots is symmetric, right? So you have like the top guys, right? Product of those guys times product of these guys who are the reflexive. Wait, it's not just the product of the roots, the product of the x-coordinates, which is slightly different. Oh, how do you find that product, dude? How do you find this nasty product? God dang it. Oh, huh. I guess, okay, so essentially we get like cosine 6 pi over 7 squared plus cosine 6 pi over 7 cosine 2 pi over 7 and we want over 2 and we could probably expand both of these. So if we expand cosine 6 pi, it'll be cosine 12 pi over 7 plus cosine, um, or plus what? Cosine 0, which is 1 over 2, right? That's a double angle formula, and then plus cosine 8 pi over 7 plus cosine 4 pi over 7 over 2, and then the whole thing over 2. Okay, so let's erase all this nonsense. So cosine 12 pi over 7 is the same thing as negative 2, it's just 2 pi, so cosine 2 pi over 7 plus cosine uh, 6 pi over 7 plus cosine 4 pi over 7 plus 1 over 4, so this whole thing is 1 half, right? So 1 half plus 1 is equal to 3 halves, 3 eighths. So this is 3 eighths, okay. So, or negative 3 eighths. Or no, no, so this sum right here is negative 1 half. Negative 1 half, so that means this is negative 1 half. Okay, then this is 1 minus, so that's a 1 eighth. So this is uh, negative 1 eighth, right? Then this is negative 1 half, right? Yeah, okay, so 1 half, negative 1 half, 1 eighth. So it should be 1 over 32, which is D, is that correct? Hey, very epic, okay, that was fun actually. I have not used trig identity that much in my life, but it's basically a bunch of product to sum formulas. That's all you gotta do. And you had to know the roots of unity thing, that all the roots of unity sum to zero, so yeah. Okay, very epic. Frida the Frog begins a sequence of hops on a 3x3 three three grid of squares, moving one square on each hop, and choosing a random direction of each hop, up, down, left, or right. She does not hop diagonally. Okay. When the direction of a hop would take Freed off the grid, she wraps around, okay, and jumps onto the opposite edge. Um, okay. So if she starts on the center square, makes at most four hops at random, stop, and stops hopping if she lands on a corner square. What are the probabilities she reaches a corner square on one of the four hops? Okay. So honestly, I think we could literally just casework bash this nonsense. Well, not casework, but just try all possibilities, right? Like, you only have 4 to the 4 possibility, that's not too bad, right? <laughs> 256? Kind of bad. We'll see. Okay. I mean, it's probably sim retreat too. So, if she starts here, she only goes up, down, left, or right, so there's no probability she does it on the first try. So, there's like a 1 fourth probability she ends up here, 1 fourth she ends up there, 1 fourth, 1 fourth on the first jump. Then on the second jump, she uh, has a 1, or, okay, so there's a 1 fourth times one fourth chance she goes here here but there's two ways to get there so there is a one eighth chance so one eighth chance she ends up here on the second jump um and then the only way for her to get from here to here the only way for her to get here is if she jumps down from here okay so there's a one sixteenth chance she gets back i don't know times four because she could come from all four sides so there's a one fourth chance she gets back to her original position Okay, just keep in mind that this should all sum to um, 1 at the end. So uh, this was 1 fourth. The only way she could get here is if she goes up from here. So that is 1 16th here. 1 16th. 1 16th. 
one sixth. And then the corners are all one eighth. So essentially we have one half from the corners, we have one fourth from there, and we have one fourth from the edges, so that sums to one, we're good. So this is after the second jump. Then after the third jump, she basically, okay, we basically just repeat the process, right? So there's a one fourth chance um, okay, so to get here, she could either come from any of these four directions, this is a one fourth times the probability sum of all the other ones. So essentially, it's going to be one fourth times one sixteenth, right? She could come from here, uh, plus one fourth times one fourth. She could come from here, uh, plus one fourth times one eighth times two, right? Because she could come from up or down. And that is equal to one sixty four, uh, four, uh, what, uh, five sixty four plus, what is this? Um, another four, so it's, uh, nine over sixty four. So this becomes 9 over 64. Let's just draw another one to be sure. 9 over 64. And then this one becomes a sum of 1 fourth times 1 sixteenth times 4, which is just 1 sixteenth again. Then these are all 9 over 64 by symmetry. These are all 1 sixteenth. Wait. Well, if these are 9 to so that means on... Okay, so this is a second... Okay, so first jump was 0. Second jump was 1 eighth. Third jump is 1 16th. Then fourth jump should just be 9 over 64 times 4, right? Or 1 fourth, yeah, so it should just be 9 over 64. Okay, well, 9 over 64 times 4. So, 9 over 16. Because, um, oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, if she stops, she stops if she reaches a corner. That is an uh, annoying thing. Okay, so this is the 1 eighth, right? So if she reaches a corner, she stops, right? Oh, oh, so in this, we don't include this. Okay. Um, which means that this is just going to be 5 over 64, right? And then if this is 5 over 64, 5 over 64, and then that's 0, well, yeah, so then the, that's just going to become 5 over 64. And that times 4 is 5 over 16. Wait, what? Am I doing this right? Oh, uh, let's see. So, 1 fourth, okay, so this is right, right? Um, should be right. Is it right? Oh, 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 no, no, I'm trolling. Okay, so she can't come... Wait, yeah, how did she... Okay, so she could go here. Oh, that would be from a corner. So only these two count. Oh, okay, okay. So the new one would be 116 times 2 times 1 fourth. So it would be 1 over 32. 1 over 32, right? And then each of the edge could come from the right or from the left. So that should still be fine. Oh, okay, okay, I get it. Okay, so essentially on the first time, there's a 0 chance. On the second time, there's a 1 eighth times 4 chance. So that's 1 eighth times 4. Then on the second time, there is a 132 times 4 chance, and then on the last time there is a 5 over 64 times 4 chance, right? Or sorry, 5 over 128. Probably we had to divide by 2 because you can only come from two sides. Alright, 5 over 128 chance. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. There we go, now we know what we're doing. So basically this just gets divided by 2 each time, except, well, I guess the last time is 5 over 60, 5 over 128. Yeah, oh, okay, so it's half the edge. Okay, okay, so originally the edge was 1 fourth, right? So then you divide by 2 to get 1 eighth. Then the edge becomes 116, then you divide by 2 to get 1 over 32. Then the edge becomes 5 over 64, you divide by 2 to get 5 over 128. Okay, so now if we get this, this is just going to be, um, multiply this guy by, what, 16. 16 plus, uh, 8, no, 4, plus 5 times 4 over 128. You can cancel that, and that becomes 32. And this becomes 25 over 32. So our answer is D. Okay, let's check that. All right, very nice. Okay, epic. All right, two more. Hey, a Geo, I love Geo. Geo, Geo is epic, which is why I did okay on 12B, but let us see how this goes. So you have AB, okay, 14, and then circle, okay, so something like tangent at point P and intersects the other guy at Q and R. Okay, so essentially it's like a chord, or well, I guess point P is not necessarily a center point. QPR, what's QPR? So Q, P, R. Okay, so that's 60. Okay, essentially there is a tangent point and two, like, hit, hit points. Q, Q, P, R. The 60 degree angle, and we want to find the area of this triangle. That is not a 60 degree angle, but it is okay. Um, well, we probably draw it a little bit nicer. Okay. And essentially, we want to make sure... What do we want to make sure? Essentially, we want the circumcircle of this triangle to be, um to be perpendicular, sorry, circum circle to be tangent to this, right? Well, we know that the center lies on the perpendicular bisector of this guy, right? And we want this to hit that perpendicular bisector at the center of the circle. Huh, so how do you do this easily? Okay, well, we know there's three, three 
Well, okay, so if it's 3 root 3, then essentially we could figure out, well, we know the radius of this 3 root 3. We know that this right here is going to be 7 to 7. So we could literally just find the angle from the center to that, and then once we figure that out, then we could do a little bit more smart stuff. Let's see. Okay, so using law of cosine, we have 49 times 2 minus 2 times 49 cosine uh, cosine c, let's just say, is equal to 27. Okay, so if we, so then 98 minus 27 is 71 over 98, uh, then that's the, is equal to cosine c, which doesn't help me at all. Hooray, okay, wait, okay, let's see. Oh, what, what are we supposed to do with that nonsense? Okay, well, we know that this 3 root 3 could be literally anywhere, but we just need the circle, circumcircle, to be tangent to here, somewhere here. Well, we know it is also a 60 degree angle somewhere. Okay, so cosine c looks bigger than root 3 over 2, right? So, or, yeah, this is for sure bigger than 1 half. So this angle is bigger than 60 degrees, which means that, yeah, it has to be pretty off-center. How does that even help, though? Okay, so we know that the perpendicular bisector of this goes through the center of this circle, right? Okay. Oh, 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 so that means that this chord is a 60 degree chord, or, oh, 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 it's a 120 degree chord on the other circle. Oh, that's so big brain. Wait a minute, okay, so this is 120 degrees, right? Which means that, like, okay, let's just say R of the new circle, R of the new circle squared, 2R, or R, yeah, 2R squared minus 2R squared cosine 60 degrees, or 120 degrees, is equal to 27, which means that, um, 2r squared plus r squared is equal to 27, which means r is equal to 3. Holy moly, that is so big brain. Okay, I, lo I love these kind of problems. That is why Geo is the best, okay? That was epic. So, essentially, we got a radius 3 dude that, like, goes, hits this dude. Okay, well, that, ah, how, okay, now, now, how do you figure out the area, area of the dude? Okay, we found the radius of the circle. How does that help us, though? So we know that there is a 60 degree triangle here, right? And we know that this goes here. And there is some perpendicular bisector here. Oh, and then we know that it intersects at 3 above, right? Oh, so we know this is 3, this is like x, this is um what? Oh, well we know like this is 3, this is 60 degrees, that is going to be 3 over 2. And then we know the distance to, what do we know the distance of the chord to the center is. Does that even help? Okay, what do we need to find in order to find the area? So we need the height, the height of the triangle. Oh wait, I could have just done that using law sine. Bro, big brain. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, I could have done that using law sine. I don't know why I didn't do that, but okay. So we got the circumradius is three. So then we got like a three right here. Okay, so we got a radius seven, we got a radius three, and we want a chord of or the intersection is, oh, 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 okay, so we could just draw this out, that is 3 root 3, holy, this is not, okay, let's draw this cleaner, okay, big, big circles, no, that's not a circle, uh, that's passable, okay, and then we have a diameter, and then we have another circle of radius 3, okay, and then this right here should be 60 degrees, okay, that's decent, and then this angle, should be 120 degrees. And then that is 3 root 3. All right, so that right there is 3, that is something. Oh, okay, so this cuts it right in half. So essentially, what is the distance between the centers? Okay, so essentially we got like a 7, radius 7, and we got another radius 3 inside, and we got this like that, or hold up. So the center of the 3 should be way in there, okay, like that. Okay, some of that. Okay, so we'll just find the distance of this thing. So this is h, this is um, 3 root 3. Okay, well basically we know that it's like 7 squared minus 3 root 3, so 49 minus 27 over 2. So 98, no, no, what, 27 over 4. 49 times 4 is 6319, 196 minus 27 is 169. Oh, so it's 13 over 2. Okay, so this is 13 over 2. Then this right here is 3 over 2. So I mean the distance between the centers is 10 over 2, right? Okay, so this distance is 10 over 2, or 10 over 3, sorry. Or 10 over 2, yeah, okay, to there. And then this is 3, which means that this is just some Pythagorean thing. So 
six, ten. Oh, so this is four. Okay. Oh, wait, this is five. Ten over two is five. Wow, so big brain. Okay. So there's a three, four, five thing. Okay. <laughs> what, 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 what am I doing? Okay, let's see. Wait, I'm not. What? <laughs> How do I want to find the area of the triangle, right? I need to find this side length. Or one of the angles. Or a height. So, I guess if I find... Huh, this is getting so messy. Okay, hold up. Okay, hold up. <laughs> Let's just draw the diagram properly, and eventually I will get- I, I know I, I probably know how to do it once I get the diagram, but like, this diagram is so heckin' annoying, holy moly. Okay, so there is a tangent diameter, K. Then there is a 3, 4, 5 triangle here. 3, 4, 5, okay. And essentially, we know that this right here is a 120, 120, 120 degree angle, and then we know that this is like that. So how else can we find the area? I don't, I don't get how to find the uh, height of this thing. Oh, 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 very clever. Okay. So essentially you got this thing, right? So if we could find a similar triangle thing to find that height. So uh, three, four, five. Oh, so then this is also a three, four, five triangle. So this is five. That means that that's four thirds of five. So that's um, 20 over three. And then this whole thing is going to be Oh, okay, so we got it. Okay, so the whole thing then is um is, is 5 times 5, so 25 over 3, the whole thing, then uh, 25 over 3 minus, okay, so there's 13 over 3, this whole length here. So essentially the ratio of this to this is 13 over 25, which means that this height right here is um 5, is 65 over 23, right? So then we just multiply by 3 to 3, divide by 2, and we get an answer. So is that the right answer? I have no idea, but let us see. I mean, it seems wrong, right? Oh, <laughs> 25, 25, okay. That would make a bit more sense, 25. So times five is 13 over five, and then this will be 39 root three over 10. Wait, what? No, no, that's not right either. Oh, oh, oh okay, so this is slightly, slightly longer. Oh, okay, so this is, um, what do we say it was 13 over two? Oh, okay, so 13 over two times five over uh, three, 13 over two times five over three is 65 over six, is this whole thing. So this minus 24 is going to be 41 over 6, right? So 41 over 65 times 5 is the height times 3 root 3 over 2. Okay, that looks a bit better. So that becomes 123 over 26 root 3, which is still not right. Wait, seriously? Okay, so we got this 13 over 2, right? Oh my god, I'm so stupid. <laughs> oh, I hate this so much. God dang it, dude. Ah, oh, I flipped up my, ah, uh, my similar triangle are flipped, dude. So triggered, oh my god. <laughs> okay, so that is why you draw your diagrams to scale. God dang it. So this is actually the short side, hooray, big brain. Okay, so 13 over 2 times 5 over 4 is equal to 65 over 8. Now you subtract 32, and you get uh, 33 over 4, or 33 over 8. Okay, all right, so now you get 33 over 65 times 13 over 2 times 3 root 3 over 2, and now we finally get something nice, we get 99 root 3 over 20, right? Or yeah, 20, okay. And this is equal to 119 plus 3, 122. Okay, finally, finally, holy moly, I'm so bad at so, oh my god, why did, uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, well we got it, okay, and I am happy. I am happy that we got it. Very epic, finally, dude. So how did they find it? Okay, yeah, they did like some similar, Holiness. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so yeah, they did find the um, circumradius using law, law of sine, and then you use some like three, yeah, so there is some three, four, five stuff. Yeah, okay, that, they use the same idea. All right, very nice. And now for the last one, let's do it. All right, let d of n denote the number of positive integers that divide n, including one and n. For example, let d of one equal one, d of two equal two, and d of 12 equals six. Okay. Let that, okay, the, there's only one where f of n is greater than, oh, oh, so we're going to find the maximum, like the n that results in the maximum, maximum number of divisors. Wait, that is kind of, kind of epic, what? Seriously, that exists? Oh, oh, over the cube root of n. Why does the cube root matter? Huh. Okay, so basically the idea is it's always better to add new, um, well, actually, is it? Well, every time you add a new thing, it multiplies the um, it multiplies the number of divisors you have by two, right? So that is always good, but it also multiplies your 
cube root of n by like cube root of the number you're multiplying by, right? So what's nice about this is that we know that our n is probably not that big of a number, right? So what is the benefit of doing what? So if you multiply by another 2, you're dividing by cube root of 2, so you want to at least get a benefit by... Oh, okay, so I guess we could just keep multiplying by 2 until we lose our benefit of multiplying by it. So once you get past 8, it's not good to add new things, because the most you can multiply by is multiply your number by um, by 2, right? So for sure we're not going to have anything other than 2, 3, 5, and 7, that's good. So why don't, why don't we just add 2s until it out, it stops like being worked, right? So 2 to the 4, let's say. Okay, so essentially it becomes, uh, with 1, 2 you multiply by 2, with 2, 2 you multiply by 3 over 2, with uh, 3, 2 you multiply by 4 over 3, so what is, okay, so which one is, okay, let's see, so 4 over 3 cubed is 64 over 27, and that is bigger, so then that's fine, then 5 over 4, I think that's smaller, 125 over 64, that's true, so um, the best thing we could do is 4 over 3. Okay, so we want 2 to the uh, 3, we want 2 to the 3. Okay, then for 3, the cube root of 3, we want um, 3 gives you 2, 3 over 3, um, 4 cubed, okay, so 64 over 27 is not greater than 3, so we don't want that, so we would have 3 squared. Wait, did that even work? So 27 over 8? Oh, that works, okay. Then 5, we want, like, um, 2, so 5 cube root of, um, okay, so does that work? 27, okay, that's for sure smaller than 5, so we just want 1, 5, and we want 1, 7, okay. So from this, we get 40 times 9 times 7 is 360 times 7 is 0, 2, 4, 2, 5. 2, 5, 2, 0, which is a sum of 9. Very cool. Bruh, <laughs> it is this, <laughs> what? Bruh, this one is not even that hard. Why is the number 25? God dang it. It will be harder than the geometry one by a lot. I mean, less hard than the geometry one by a lot. What the heck? Well, actually, no. To be fair, the geometry one, I was just trolling very hard. God dang it. This is why you gotta draw your diagrams to scale. But it's kind of hard on a drawing tablet. God dang it. I'm sad. I'm sad now. <laughs> geometry is supposed to be epic. I mean, it was epic, but still, that was sad. Alright, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed me solving the more hard ones. Um, I wish I got time to read these on the actual test. Like, um, number 23, number number 22 wasn't even that bad, number 25 wasn't that bad. This one, I probably would have wasted a ton of time to, to have time on if I actually read it during the competition, so I guess that's the thing. But, anyway, that's enough ranting. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.